Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to today's video. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, in today's video, I wanted to do basically a rundown of what my baby essentials list is. This is not necessarily the nice to haves, this is the pure essentials and I feel like this video is gonna be perfect for first time mums that genuinely have no idea where to start. Like this is your ultimate list for things you actually need when you are having a baby. Things you might not think about, things I didn't think about when I was a first time mum or things I did get that I might not have needed, those kind of things. Basically I'm gonna go through like the exact numbers of vests, baby grows, nappies, all of that stuff. Um, so I'm literally gonna go through everything that I've done. I've done a spreadsheet, obviously. So I'm gonna set you guys up. I'm gonna go through my spreadsheet. I'm gonna show you everything that I've got on there. I've added a few things from the list that I did last time. So I was pregnant in 2020 with my first baby and I had a baby essentials list then. Obviously I've had the baby since then. He is now a toddler and I'm now pregnant with baby number two. Um, so I've added a few little things on there that we ended up using for George. I'm also gonna link every single thing that I mentioned down below, things that we used last time that we're gonna reuse and then things that we are gonna purchase for baby number two that either we threw away from last time or we didn't have last time. So yeah, get yourself a cup of tea. If you're a first time mum or if you're a second time mum, fourth time mum, 10th time mum then let me know down in the comments and obviously if I've forgotten anything because it's very likely then let me know and I will definitely be adding that to my list but basically this is how I am getting organized for baby number two so I know exactly how much we're going to have to pay for everything so that's also in this video like the exact amounts of money that we're going to be spending on baby number two um and also if we were to buy all of this stuff from new or like buy it all right now which obviously we don't have to because we've got a lot of stuff from when my son was little but yeah I'm just gonna show you everything guys. Buckle in, let's do this. Okay, what I'm gonna do is pop up the baby essentials list that I'm talking about and I'm gonna go through it on my laptop at the same time. So first up, I've basically categorized them into like clothing, sleeping, feeding, changing, bathing and health and travel. And I'm just gonna talk through like all of the points basically. So starting off with this is the list that Basically, I pretty much had for when I was pregnant with my first son. However, I've added things and I've changed things based on what we used last time that I know that I would prefer to actually use again this time. Also, in terms of the colour coding, I've got green for things that we've already purchased or already have, or we've got red, which is I still need to buy these things for baby number two. So this is it. I've got all the prices, the quantities, the total amount it's going to cost, plus any links. I'm going to hopefully go through and add like extra links if I can. But for now, I'm just going to go through the list and we can go from there. So first up is clothing. So I started off with vests in up to one month size and then baby grows up to one month size. There's obviously all these different sizes when it comes to baby clothes and I don't know why they make it so complicated, but there's like newborn up to one month or first size and then there's zero to three months they're all slightly different sizes and it obviously depends on the weight of your baby i certainly know from scans and previous my previous baby as well generally like up to one month is i think gonna be the one that we go into first um and that was I think up to 10 pounds. Basically zero to three months was too big for my first baby. Um, and newborn, he was in newborn for maybe a couple of weeks. So the one, up to one month one is the one that I wanted to focus on. And I have basically said that I'm gonna have 12 vests and 12 baby grows each. And I've priced these out at how much it would cost to get like the multi-pack sets, for example, from Georgia Asda, they're really good quality and they do like really nice patterns and stuff. So I've basically priced it on that. Um, so the vests and the baby grows, I think 12 of each would be more than enough. And obviously shops don't close like when you have a baby, you can still pop out to the shops and get some more. For the newborn days especially, I would honestly just advise going to the supermarkets, like supermarket owned brands do really nice sets and like multi-packs of baby grows as well as places like Next 
do really nice zip up baby grows they're not going to be in them for very long whatsoever so i really 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 wouldn't spend too much and i would definitely go for the multi-packs and then in the zero to three month size i would say 20 baby grows and 24 vests again i've worked this out based on georgia asda multi-packs so that's the start like the amount that you get in a georgia asda multi-pack um so yeah that's basically how much it would cost and in terms of the zero to three months it would cost 60 pounds if you got them all brand new if you got 20 different baby grows and then also the vest would cost 24 pounds basically well, working out to one pound each if you got 24 of those obviously like i said you can get them in loads of different places i've worked it out on the georgia as the prices just because i really liked those sets luckily we won't actually have to buy any of these things because we've already got them all we've got hand-me-downs galore from family friends that have basically given us loads of baby girl stuff we've got loads of stuff from when george was little um at this size as well that were pretty much all neutral colors and stuff so yeah we're really lucky that we're not going to have to buy anything like at all um in terms of clothing then we've got things like socks i'm not gonna lie newborn socks isn't something that i would invest in um so actually i should probably remove it from this it's good to have a few pairs but 12 is actually really excessive <laughs> so in my opinion like my newborn never wore socks when i was a first time mum. he was always in the baby grows with the um little feet that's the other thing with the baby grows i would definitely get the ones that have the um mittens integrated and the feet integrated as well as well as zips if you can get them i know they're a lot more widely available than they were when i was pregnant in 2020 these days so um yeah if you can get the zip up ones and great but they are sometimes a little bit more expensive the other things on clothing are a cardigan hats and a pram suit obviously dependent on when your newborn is going to be born my baby girl is going to be born in june hopefully so um not sure we're going to need like a very thick pram suit because she's going to be going in to summer but it's probably like to be honest it's something that we've got loads of anyway like i said because we've got a load of hand-me-downs but yeah just think about like the seasons maybe and what you would want them to wear but they're like the core essentials me and my husband always joke that he was always really worried about george being too my, my son george being too hot and i was always really worried about him being too cold um so we would always like wonder what to put him in there are so many great thermometers and little guides as well where you can basically see like how many layers they should be wearing what clothes they should be wearing based on the temperature so definitely look all of that kind of stuff up but um yeah that is it for clothing that is it you don't need all of fancy dresses and outfits i really would avoid outfits <laughs> for newborns i really would um until like three three to six months to be honest in my opinion but obviously each to their own moving on to the sleep category um so baby monitor obviously essential something that i would say is definitely get one with a camera um do your research figure out what's like right for you whether you want one that's got wi-fi and um you can see it on your phone or if you just want one that's not wi-fi stable connection then i would recommend the bonnock baby monitor that i actually recently have got i'm using it with george at the moment and i'm gonna be using it with baby number two and i absolutely love it i did a um brand like partnership with bonnock in a couple of videos ago um in my baby prep number two video but i love the monitor and i would actually really recommend it so i'll link that one down below for you guys that actually works out to about 100 pounds which is less than i spent on the baby monitor that we had last time which was more than that and not as good um so yeah definitely do your research but i would say about 100 pounds on a really good baby monitor would be like the perfect like solution you obviously don't have to spend that much but if you do get one that's cheaper just be aware that you might not like it and you might end up buying another one and therefore spending that amount of money in the long run anyway but it's totally up to you obviously do your own research that's definitely what we're going to be doing though then we've got the love to dream swaddle which i think yes it's a bit of a splurge but actually guys they're so good and it's such good peace of mind for when they're newborns they're completely tucked in it's a zip up it's so easy in and out you can like change their nappies really easily in the night um they're snuggled up really nice and warm um and they have like different togs throughout the different seasons um and they can go up like through the sizes as well i honestly think they're worth the money and definitely something that we're going to be using again with baby number two so i'll link those down below for things like walks i would say cellular blankets um so like a twin pack of cellular blankets i think i linked these ones from amazon that we got 
last time for George and they were like £12 for a set of two which was just really really great so I've popped that in there as well. Also in the sleep category I've popped a white noise machine slash nightlight. I have one that works really really well together so it's a white noise machine you can also have lullabies playing you can have lots of different noises and stuff playing on it and you can also have a nightlight on it. Say for example you're breastfeeding or you're bottle feeding in the night and you're doing the night feeds and you just want a nightlight on just like so that you're if you're walking around or like getting up and stuff you can actually see what you're doing um then i would definitely recommend a nightlight you don't have to have one that does both things together um but white noise is a really really great one for newborns you can obviously get a cheaper white noise machine and then a separate nightlight if you wanted to just a cheapy one like plug in like for maybe on the landing so say like if you are bottle feeding i think i'm um, having like nightlights like throughout the landing on the stairs things like that is quite helpful because if you are walking around in the middle of the night and you're very sleep deprived it's quite um yeah you just want to make sure that you can see like where you're going without waking yourself up too much i guess um so yeah do your research on that but definitely night lights and white noise absolute musts and then for like the core core sleep essentials for us we used the next to me cot which was a zero to six months kind of a situation um which we're going to be using again i think we use the maxi cozy iora which i'll link down below i love it it looks nice um and it does the trick it's you know it's got all the functions that you would think an next to me cot would need it's small so it's going to fit next to the bed which is really helpful it just works really well for us it's 180 pounds i think so if you are tight on a budget then you could potentially go straight into a cot or maybe even a travel cot instead um like skipping the next to me cot um stage but we already have it so we're going to be using it again um and then things like mattress protectors which is something that i didn't think about too much last time and crib sheets as well are the two things that i would say get more of than you expect mattress protectors get at least two if not three or four um, and then sheets as well get at least two if not three or four biggest tip ever for the newborn days just in case of like leakages and things like that is to double layer so what i mean by that is having a mattress protector then a crib sheet then a mattress protector then a crib sheet that way if there are any leakages in the middle of the night you can just take off the top two which is the mattress protector and the crib sheet and then you've got like fresh sheets underneath and you don't have to like worry about faffing around in the middle of the night when you're already going to be sleep deprived <laughs> that is a massive win um and then moving on to like the six months plus kind of situation um a cot bed i would definitely say get a cot bed instead of just a cot because the cot bed can transfer like into toddlerhood as well we're going to be using george's old cot bed he's now in a single bed so baby number two can have his old cot bed and but that won't be really used until six months plus onwards when they're in their own room hopefully if that's what we decide to do like i say all of those things in green we actually already have um but then the things that we don't have are dummies dummy clips and a bouncer so um those are the three things that i need to purchase bouncer i guess isn't really for sleep is it but i didn't really know what category to put it in so i just popped it in here it's like where they sit <laughs> um we don't have a bouncer because we threw george's out it just got like a bit damaged in the moves the various moves that we've done uh so yeah i need to get a new bouncer for baby girl and dummies and dummy clips um and then moving on to feeding so this one is actually going to be slightly different from the last time i was pregnant so last time i was pregnant i was very set that i was going to bottle feed from the get-go i was going to harvest my colostrum when i was pregnant um give that to baby and then i was like absolutely sure that i was going to be bottle feeding um so i knew that i had to get all the bottles or the sterilizers or the, all the all the stuff that comes along with bottle feeding right but this time i'm not so sure like i'd quite like to give breastfeeding a go which is not something that i even considered last time um and i don't really know why i think it was a mixture of various different things and to be honest like i really don't feel like i should have to um justify myself or explain or anything like that so i'm so i'm not going to um it's just such a weird thing isn't it like the judgment around feeding and how you choose to feed your baby is so strange um but anyway so i i'm going to try and give it breastfeeding a go this time so i'm not going to purchase all of the things that i you know have down on this list straight away i don't think because I'm not going to hopefully need them straight away. And if I, if I want them, I can literally get them Amazon Prime next day delivery, which, you know, is totally fine. Or if worse comes to worse, I can go to like the local Tesco or the local Asda or the local whatever shop and pick things up. So I'm not too stressed about this kind of section. I'm just going to see how 
breastfeeding goes um, and if it doesn't work for me then obviously bottle feeding is something that I'm completely familiar with um, and will like absolutely be fine to go on to if I need to. Here is basically everything that I had last time um, and in terms of all the numbers and the costs and the links and everything I've popped everything there like exactly the things that I used or will use um, if I have to bottle feed next time here. Um, so obviously we've got things like the Tommy TV prep machine already because we already used that for our first baby so that's not something that I would repurchase we do already have that just in, just in the cupboard but I will link that down below as well we've got the older version which is slightly cheaper however a lot of this stuff you can get second hand which to be honest I would highly recommend like saving money on second hand things especially baby stuff is probably the option that I would go for I actually think the Tommy TV prep machine that I got last time was second hand so yeah, I would really recommend doing that. And then you can buy like new filters for it. They do them on Amazon. I'm sure they do them in other places as well. So yeah, I'll link all of this stuff down below. I'll just list through it, but I won't go into too much detail. So I would use the MAM bottles, which is basically the anti-colic bottles that we used for George. And I would definitely reuse those for baby number two if we like needed to. I think it's really good value. £40 for loads of bottles, the little bottles for newborn days, and then the larger bottles that are just gonna last until they're off of milk anyway. Sterilizing tablets, um, cold water, sterilizer slash a microwave sterilizer they're basically the same thing i we used cold water sterilizing last time with the sterilizing tablets and that's what work, worked for us really really well then we've got bottle brushes to clean the bottles properly formula if you wanted to i'd probably just get one pack to be honest to start off with because you don't know whether baby's going to take to that formula they're going to like it etc and you can always just pop out to the shop again it's not too much of a Faff. I feel like last time I was like really worried about how many nappies I needed, how many bottles I needed, how much formula I needed, whereas now, because because at the time it was like Covid times, we couldn't just go out to the shop freely, whereas now, actually you can just kind of pop to the shop and it's not really a big deal. Um, so yeah, and then ready to feed formula as well, I said a pack of six for this and that was for the hospital. Again, obviously, that is if you're choosing to bottle feed from the get-go in hospital. Um, so yeah, that was just something that I popped on there last time. And then muslins and burp cloths and bibs as well. Absolute musts. Muslins and bibs. Wow, you go through them so quickly, it's insane. We've already got a ton, again, like I said, from last time ones that we didn't even use last time because we had so many and then ones that we've been handed down as well like really cute ones um so yeah we've got those but i've linked a few that i used last time in the description box if you wanted to see those then moving on to changing so we start off with nappies and baby wipes so i know nappies is a big one um how many to get how many packs how many poos do they do a day how many wheezes they do a day i was really like hung up on this last time like how many do i need a day and how much how long is this gonna last and like if i get one pack will that last like how many days will that last like i i'm far less like uptight about it this time i feel like i'm gonna get like five packs of size mixed between size one and size two nappies um and i think they go up in like the different pounds so i think size one is up to x amount of pounds size two is up to x amount of pounds and then it just carries on um so yeah we'll just see how big or small baby girl is and then just go from there like i said you can just pop out to the shop and get some more and then baby wipes like the no fragrance baby wipes basically like water wipe dupes um everywhere kind of has those now don't they like fragrance free water wipes type wipes instead of using cotton wool and water i know that that's like the recommended way of doing it and if you want to do that of course by all means do that um i just know that i i'm not sure i didn't have the patience for that last time let alone second time round. so i'll be using the fragrance free uh water wipes like we did last time um and that worked perfectly for us there's actually a really really good big set that you can get on amazon that works out to like a pound a pack if that actually i think it's even cheaper and you get a massive pack of them so if you're looking to like stock up i'll actually link those ones down below because they are supposed to be really really good i've seen so many people talk about those on Instagram. Other things in the changing category are a changing mat, like a proper changing mat for at home. It's just nice to have like a waterproof area that you can wipe clean, like really nice and simply. So I'll link the one that we've used 
previously down below and I'll be using that for baby girl as well and then also a travel changing mat so last time around we had an Aldi travel changing mat that had a little compartment for the wipes and the nappies and nappy creams and bags and all those kind of things again it was waterproof um, you could wipe it clean it just like bundled up really really nicely and you could pop it in your bag and you had everything in there you needed to do nappy changes the Aldi one I couldn't find that online so I got a new one from um, Amazon which I'll link down below which I think I showed in a recent vlog and it's just so good it's so good I'm actually using it at the moment with George it's just good to have it all in one place really nice and easy pop it in the changing bag and Bob's your uncle so I'll link that one down below I don't think it was too expensive and yeah to be honest like I love those travel changing mats I feel like they're an absolute essential for every single stage of parenthood when your when your baby slash toddler is still in nappies next I popped in this changing bag this is actually left over from last time i did this list i actually grabbed the changing bag that i got for george for five pound in the amazon sale years ago obviously and it is now like completely broken and distraught so this five pound bag no, sadly is no longer but um yeah a nappy bag of some sort it can be a rucksack it can be a specific type of changing bag amazon have loads i wouldn't go too bougie with it um although the one that i've got now is like a cream leathery kind of rucksack and i do really love it i'll link that one down below if you're interested but it's certainly not an essential basically any kind of rucksack changing bag um anything like that I would say probably like 20 quid, 25 quid would do you. You don't need too much um, as long as you've got a couple of pockets in there. That would be totally fine. And then also metanium and nappy cream. So I didn't really use anything on George um, before. He was probably like three months old, to be honest, because um, he, he never even had like nappy rash or anything, but you never know. Um, as he's got older, metanium nappy cream is literally creme de la creme in terms of getting rid of any kind of rash, any kind of soreness. But yeah, moving on to bathing and health. Um, all things that we've actually got, we've got them all already. Last time we used the Angel Care Baby Bath Support in the bath, so a shallow bath and then the bath support so your baby can, you know, sit, not sit up, but like be supported in the bath. George was in the um, sort of bath support until probably like six months-ish maybe even, yeah, around that age, I'd say, like five, six months. Um, so yeah, I think that's exactly what we're gonna use again. Things like a baby sponge, baby wash, baby lotion. If I'm totally honest, like I don't think, again, we used anything on George's newborn skin other than warm water for the first few months. I think then afterwards we would like maybe use baby oil, things like that, which we've got tons of still. Um, so we're not gonna like purchase any of that. But yeah, I think, Basically, when they're newborn, you don't really need much in terms of, like, product. And then also the healthcare kit, which is the Tommy Tippy healthcare kit. It's got all the good stuff, like a thermometer, um, some little nail clippers, um, you know, a little baby toothbrush, a little baby comb. Um, just a really nice little set to have everything in in one place. The amount of times we've used that thermometer is unreal. The other thing that I would say, though, is to get a um, no-touch thermometer. You can get these on Amazon. But I would say the one that we've got, which is the Tommy Tippy no-touch thermometer, again absolute lifesaver they are so so handy when it comes to babies and toddlers like understanding what their temperature is and then the big stuff these are like the big buys i would say like the travel items and these are the key ones for first time round and second time round if i'm totally honest so the first one would be if it is your first baby to get like a travel system or basically a buggy come car seat combination um so uh, like a travel system is like the most common um option if i'm totally honest and i always try and be totally honest in here i'm rarely rarely used the lay down like bassinet type um one i think you're supposed to like when they're newborns um you're obviously not supposed to keep them in the car seat for too long but with the travel systems you can basically get the car seat and add it to the chassis of the buggy, which I found was the simplest way. A lot of car seats, like these days, can recline and you can like have the baby stretched out rather than being all hunched up, which they're not supposed to be for longer periods than like half an hour or 45 minutes in the really early days. Like I said, if your car seat can recline, then that's the absolute perfect scenario. You actually aren't gonna get a new travel system or a new buggy or anything like that um, for baby number two because we already have a buggy for George, who really doesn't use it very often, if I have to be honest. He currently has the Baby Zen Yo-Yo 2, um, which has does have a bassinet um, attachment, and it also has like a six-month-plus normal seat attachment. We love it. It's so lightweight. It's so compact. 
it's just really really great for like i would say like small pavement walk it's not great for like if you're in the forest basically but to be honest if i was in the forest i would wear a baby carrier anyway i wouldn't wear I wouldn't use a like buggy so that's what we've got already and that's what we're gonna use we already have a car seat for George and I'll move on to what we're gonna be getting for baby number two in the next bit and also in terms of travel like I said a baby carrier a baby carrier is an absolute must especially if this is your second baby um but yeah baby carrier like I just found amazing like I said if we were going for walks um in the woods or like um i don't know like a, across like the countryside i would find a baby carrier way more useful than a buggy itself um but yeah when they're little it's a lot easier once they get to like one year maybe not so much and then i've actually added up all of the products um, that I've spoken about, if you were to buy them from brand new, so none of this is second hand, get it all brand new, which I'll link them down below. Um, the total for baby number one, if you've got all the things that we spoke about so far, including a car seat, including a nice to fix space, including um, a travel system, like a buggy and everything. By the way, the link that I've provided is the thing is the travel system we got for George when he was younger, which I would definitely recommend for a first time parent if you're on a budget. It's really affordable, it's about £400 for the lot, um, which is like really, really cheap for a travel system, like car seat and, um, and Isofix base, if you're getting it brand new. But all of this stuff that I've mentioned would be £1,654. However, what I would say is um, you can get a lot of this secondhand and save a lot of money on this. So things like the cot, um, maybe not the mattress, but the cot, um, certainly you could get secondhand. Certainly the um, travel system, maybe not a car seat, but the buggy or something, for example, you could definitely get secondhand. You don't have to go for the exact options that I've chosen. But yeah, the total of £1,654 is if you were to get every single thing that I've personally recommended and I've personally used from new. That's how much it would cost you like to get all of these things but like i say get second hand get bargain hunting get shopping around and you could easily get that price down and then you can see here for baby number two the things that we have left over to purchase is 155 pounds so the things that are in red here um so that's actually including all of the um like bottles and all the feeding things that i'm not sure i'm going to need um or like i'm not going to buy straight away anyway um all of the things that we've seen in this list so far is 155 pounds so that's how much money that i need to um have like put away for baby number two if i wanted to buy things on this list however i am also gonna be getting some stuff off of the second list which is my baby number two list which i'll go show you now it's much shorter um just because these are extra things that i feel like i will need because it's the second baby um, and there's actually only three things so the first thing is a buggy board um, the reason being obviously I still do have a toddler that might sometimes get tired legs if baby number two is in the buggy and then my toddler gets you know tired legs then he can just go on the buggy board um, and then I can just be pushing them both rather than getting a double pram firstly like I said my son doesn't really like um, the buggy anyway like he doesn't like being that restricted he much prefers like walking um, yeah just walking and running and you know running off and things like that but uh yeah he's not a he's not a buggy buggy toddler at all um so a buggy board is something that i definitely want to get and i'm going to get a fairly good one like 100 quid or something like that i think um which i'll link the amazon one down below that i'm gonna actually get secondly an infant car seat and an isofix base because like i said we already have a car seat for george my toddler but he is obviously using that and that actually lasts until he's like four um so we need to get an infant car seat um and then also a new isofix base as well i have no idea which one i'm gonna get so i would love your recommendations the only thing that i would say is it has to be uh, compatible with the baby zen yo-yo 2 um so i'm looking at a few different ones like maxi cozy and i'm also looking at the cybex ones i'm looking at a few i'm comparing a few looking at the prices but i'm looking to spend about 300 pounds because i want to make sure that it's a really good one really high quality and safe um and obviously with the isofix base they're also quite expensive so i just want to make sure that it's the right one but i honestly don't know which one i'm going to get now so definitely open to recommendations if you guys have any um, and then also to go with that is the baby zen yo-yo adapters because to add a car seat onto the chassis of a baby zen yo-yo 2 pram you need ad adapters which are like 60 pounds so <laughs> i'm gonna buy those as well but the grand total of that list is 460 pounds if um everything costs like the estimated price that i've like put here so the grand total, including the 460 from baby number two list 
and the um, total from my previous list, which was £155, is £615. Um, so that's how much money we have to put away for baby number two. We're about halfway there I think in terms of savings so we've got like a pot of money already so if a good car seat comes up with a good deal then we can get that um so yeah that is my baby essentials list that is everything that we are expecting to buy and use for baby number two in terms of our essentials in terms of what we know we're going to be using um from last time all the things that we've already got and then all the things that are still outstanding that we still need to purchase i feel so much more organized having like done this list so i'd highly recommend doing it like your version might be slightly different to mine obviously but this is like tried and tested basically from only from our family but you know it's basically what we did so i really hope you found it a little bit helpful at least anyway guys my toddler is just about to wake up from his nap which is very good timing but i'm gonna have to love you and leave you i hope you found this video helpful give it a like if you did and if you want to ask any questions or give me any recommendations down in the comments then please 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 do i would absolutely love that for now i'm gonna love you and leave you and i'll see you in the next one Bye. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. I feel so free, oh my sweet baby.